Concerning roxalitinib therapy and its benefits, one of the measured benefits in the clinical trials that led to the approval of this therapy was reduction in spleen size. This is something that we can measure relatively easily. In a clinical trial, we would use MRI and calculate in a very sophisticated way the volume of the spleen. In clinical practice, we might just take a tape measure and measure it for the patient or use an ultrasound, for example. Um, typically, um, more than 97% of patients treated with roxalitinib will see some reduction in their spleen size. Often it's very rapid, maybe within two to four weeks, but it can go on progressively reducing, although the most rapid and significant reduction is initial. Usually that is dose related. The higher the dose, the greater the reduction, but we're not always aiming to get the spleen size back to, zero, back to normal rather than zero. So we may have a target for each patient. It may be a spleen reduction that's enough to stop them feeling full, which is known as early satiety after eating. It may be that we want them to reach the, an equivalent to the endpoint in the clinical trial, which means a 50% reduction in the amount of the spleen we can palpate below the ribs. If the patient has spleen reduction, that's a good sign. It usually means that the patient is benefiting and it often means that the patient may well get the survival benefit that's so important with roxalitinib. Sometimes we treat patients, however, not just for spleen reduction. We treat them also because we want them to be able to put on weight. We want to get rid of itching. We want to control sweating. So we have to think about individual things as we manage individual patients.